All right, iOS 16 has finally been released, and for today's video, I've assembled some of my favorite tips, tricks, and hidden features that I think you're going to really like. And by the end of this video, I think you'll learn at least something new and be able to impress your friends and family with some of these neat features. All right, but I don't wanna waste your time, so let's jump into it. Now, for new users to iOS 16, the first thing you're going to want to do is master the lock screen. To do this, go into your iOS lock screen and long press on the lock screen, and there you will get a new menu in iOS 16, where you can not only switch between custom lock screens and wallpapers, but also make your own. To do this, scroll to the right or press the blue plus button, and from here, you will see a whole list of wallpaper collections, suggested photos, and you can even set like emoji custom wallpapers and special lock screens like weather and astronomy. Simply select the wallpaper you want to start with, and then you can start customizing how it looks with widgets, fonts, colors, and so on. You can even customize how your wallpaper will look on your home screen or set different wallpapers for lock screen and your home screen. Honestly, there is a ton of different options and customizations for the iOS 16 lock screen, and I could do a whole video on all of these different options, but we got like 15 more tips and tricks to go over, so let's move along. All right, now that we've mastered the lock screen, let's dig into some real tips and tricks, and the first one is to re-enable battery percentage. This has been gone for a long time, but it's finally back in iOS 16. To enable the battery percentage icon, go to settings, Scroll down to battery and then toggle battery percentage. Now you can see the battery percentage number in the top right of your iPhone's display. Now, unfortunately, as of the making of this video, this will not work on the iPhone XR, iPhone 11, iPhone 12 mini, and iPhone 13 mini, but every other phone with a notch should support this battery percentage feature. Now, if you have an iPhone 13, this next trick is really great. So remember when Face ID only worked if you held the phone upright vertically? And if you held your phone sideways in landscape mode, it wouldn't work. Yeah, that was pretty awkward when you're like waking up uh, in bed and you're just like, oh, try and unlock with Face ID and it never worked. Well, thankfully in iOS 16, that is now fixed. So now in iOS 16 on the iPhone 13, when you rotate your phone to landscape, it will now unlock with Face ID. And it works in a pretty wide orientation. Pretty much as long as you aren't holding your iPhone completely upside down, Face ID should still be able to scan your face and unlock your phone. Now, have you ever been upset about the lack of haptic feedback on your iOS keyboard? Well, for the first time in iOS 16, you can now use haptics on the iPhone's keyboard. However, it's kind of tricky to find the setting as it's not in your keyboard settings. So to enable this, just go to settings, scroll down to sound and haptics, scroll down to keyboard feedback, tap into that and enable the haptic toggle. Now when you type on your keyboard, you'll get small little vibrations that let you know when you hit a key. Now, have you ever sent a message that you didn't mean to send? Well, in iOS 16, you can now simply unsend it. To do this, just long press on the message you wish to unsend, and then you will see a list of options pop up with an undo send button. Just tap that and your message will be unsent. Now, if you simply made a typo or meant to edit how you said something, you can also edit your message in iOS 16. To do this, simply long press on a message and this time select edit and then simply fix your typo or type whatever you meant to say and hit the check mark to edit your message. Now, just be made aware that there will be an edit log that the other user can tap into and see what you edited and you can also tap into this as well. And you also just have a 15 minute limit to either unsend or edit a message. Also, users on iOS 15 or older will not see your edits or your messages get unsent, so be made aware of that as well. Another cool messaging feature is that you can now automatically convert units of measurements, temperature, and currency. Basically, anytime you see something underlined in messages, just tap on it and it will automatically convert. So if I tap on 20 degrees Celsius, it converts to 68 degrees Fahrenheit and 293.15 Kelvin. Who uses Kelvin? Now, if I tap on 20 pounds, it not only converts the currency of British pounds to dollars, but also pounds as a unit of measurement. And if I tap on 34 euros, it converts to 34.24 dollars. This is a very easy way to convert measurements, and it's a great tool for when you're conversing with people that live in other countries. Speaking of which, if you are visiting another country and you need to convert these measurements quickly, you can actually do that in the native iOS camera app. To do this, simply open the camera, point it at what you want to convert, 
tap this bottom right icon, and then if it can convert, you'll see another symbol on the bottom left of the camera app. Tap this and it will display the correct conversion. Furthermore, you can use this same method to translate from the camera. Again, point your camera at what you want to translate, click the bottom right icon, and then click on translate. The camera app will then translate text and place it directly over the photo of what you translate it. And if you tap on this, you could even get more details and also play an audio version of the translation, which is very helpful. Another thing you'll want to enable in iOS 16 is to have Siri automatically send messages. So by default, if you ask Siri to send a message to someone, it will always ask you to confirm the message. It's kind of annoying and really slows down how fast the message is sent out. So to have this done automatically, go to settings, scroll down to Siri and search, then tap automatically send messages and toggle automatically send messages. Now, when you ask Siri to send a message, there will be a timer that when it finishes, it will automatically send that message in about five seconds. And if Siri misheard you, you can still hit the cancel button if you don't wanna send that message. So it's not like you just tell Siri to send something and she, she just sends it. You still have time to cancel it, and that's why this feature is really nice. Another thing you need to try out in iOS 16 is improved dictation. So now dictation works together with the native keyboard. So you can start typing like normal, then hit the microphone icon in the bottom right corner of the keyboard. This will now leave voice dictation on, and you can just speak to start typing. Now dictation will also autofill punctuation, and if you want to manually type again, you can simply just start typing. And if you want to dictate again, simply just start speaking again. There's no need to toggle the dictation on or off as you write. And if you want to turn off dictation again, simply again, tap the bottom right microphone button. I love this new feature. It's a really great way to combine the methods of speaking and typing at the same time. And it's a very fast and efficient way to use your iPhone. All right, now on your iOS 16 homepage, there's a new way to get to Spotlight. So as you swipe between your pages, you'll still see the number of app pages on the bottom. However, if you pause, you'll notice this lower bar now says search. Just tap on this to enter the Spotlight search. And from here, you can look up apps, look up information on the web, and even use it as a calculator. Okay, one of the coolest features in iOS 16 has to be the ability to automatically select subjects and images and automatically kind of Photoshop them out of the image. And to do this, you just have to find a photo, long press on the subject, you'll kind of see this little wave animation play out, meaning it's now selected. Now all you have to do is lift this image by dragging your finger, and now you can navigate to other apps like Messages and drop this into Messages with the subject completely cut out of the photo as a transparent PNG image. And you can do this in other apps too, like Notes. This is a really cool feature and an impressive use of Apple's machine learning and an invaluable tool for YouTubers who need to make thumbnails. All right, what's the first thing someone asks when they enter your house? Yep, time's up. Y you got it right, it's the Wi-Fi password. Well, if you forgot it, you can now find it in your iOS settings. To do this, go into settings, tap on Wi-Fi, then tap on the info button on your Wi-Fi. And right there, you will see an area for username and password. Now, obviously, I won't show you my Wi-Fi password, but if you tap on that section, Face ID will open up, scan your face to make sure it's you, and then show you your username if you have one, and then also your Wi-Fi password. From here, you can even copy it and paste it to send it in a message to your friend, so then they can just copy and paste it into the Wi-Fi password field, so it's very, very simple to enter that Wi-Fi password for them. All right, I take a lot of photos, screenshots, and save a ton of images online. And I always have a ton of duplicate images in my photo library, and it would be nice if there was an easy way to get rid of all of these duplicate images. Well, thankfully in iOS 16 there is. Now, to find and get rid of your duplicate photos, go to Photos, go to Albums, scroll down, and under Utilities, you'll find a new Duplicates folder, and as you can see, I wasn't lying, 1,161 duplicate photos. <laughs> what am I doing? Now, tap on this album, and you can now see duplicate photos. To get rid of duplicate photos, 
hit merge. The cool thing about this feature is that if you merge the photos, the photos will automatically delete the duplicate and then keep the highest quality photo that you have available and also combine the relevant data between both photos. If you have a lot of duplicates that you don't wanna review, you can even select all and merge your entire library to purge all of your duplicate images. Now, what if you want to save some sensitive photos like a username or a password or photos of like, your best girl in anime, or your best boy. Listen, I'm not gonna make fun of you. Uh, well, in iOS, uh, there's always has been a hidden album. However, it is much better in iOS 16, with it now automatically being locked with Face ID. But you might not know about this album. It's kind of hidden. It's, it's a hidden album that's hidden. So to find this hidden album and enable it, click on settings, scroll down to show the hidden album, and toggle it on. Now, like last time, go back to photos, Go to album, scroll down to utilities, and now you'll see a new hidden folder. As you can see, it's locked. Simply tap on it and Face ID will activate and scan your face. And when it unlocks, you can now see your hidden images. And if you wanna add images to this folder, it's just like adding any other photo to an album. And then now it's just automatically hidden and automatically locked. All right, for my last feature, it has to do with tabs in Safari. I always have a ton of tabs open in Safari and constantly misplace important tabs that I meant to open later. Well, thankfully in iOS 16, I can now pin Safari tabs. To do this, open Safari, go to your tabs, long press on the Safari tab, and then select pin tab. And you can do this for multiple tabs. And when you scroll up to your tabs in Safari, you'll now see all of your pin tabs right at the top. So you can easily select them and go back to them. All right, everyone, and those are my 16, iOS 16, tips and tricks for new users, for advanced users, or for anyone, really. I mean, these were pretty helpful, right? I really did hope they helped you out. And if they did, do me a favor and make sure you hit the like button. And if they were really helpful, do me a big favor and hit the subscribe button for the channel. It will really help me out. Also, be sure to let me know in the comments below what was your favorite tip or trick. And if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching it all. You're the best. And hopefully, I'll see you in the next one.